All right, so today, in order to tie in with what you guys have been studying lately, I'm going to talk about mythology and its impact on modern literature. All right, and as you can see, I can see it better here. The, as you already know, the original purpose of mythology was to explain things or teach a lesson. Like, for example, this is the abduction of Persephone, which was originally intended to explain the changing seasons. And that story, in a nutshell, well, we'll get to that later. Another example of lessons that were supposed to be taught was the story of Icarus and Diatolus, which was about the importance of obeying your elders. And we can move on. Anyways, as time went on, of course, the knowledge of things changed. Like, uh, for example, what was it? science. And this is a little science site I found. And it shows how the seasons genuinely change. It says Earth's rotation axis always. Oh, dear. Yeah. Can you? Oh, yeah. All right. Rotation axis always pointed to celestial poles. As Earth moves around the sun, around the sun, sometimes one hemisphere is tilted toward the sun and sometimes away. And the seasons are shown here for the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere seasons are to the opposite. So it's a lot less complex if you think about it than this guy. He only gets to see his wife so much. And you can move forward now, please. One more. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. But in spite of the fact that these have long since been debunked, a lot of people still really enjoyed the stories and continue to tell them. And matter of fact, the examples I show here are from recent decades, and they're used to both entertain and to educate. And for example, I'll click here, this uh, webtoons. Yeah, webtoons. This is a webcomic called Lore Olympus, which is a more modern retelling of the Hades and Persephone story. You can click it. Uh, uh, let's go for it. The uh, top one, yeah. Alright. Yeah, probably not. But bottom line, there it's a modern retelling. It's, let's go back. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Pretty simple. Okay. Uh, guess we can scroll a little bit. Uh, yeah, let's go back. Cause, uh, yeah, let's go back. <laughs> Congratulations on your beautiful wedding. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, let's go back. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can see from the gist of it's without too many details. And everybody's in a modern setup, but it's still obviously creatures and people from mythology. And this example, and I'll click on this right here, is a little IMDb. This was TV show decades past called Adventures from the Book of Virtues. And it was, and it shows how mythology can be used to teach lessons in the modern era. You know, for example, oh, scroll up, please. Right. Summaries. And it's in the context of the episode, Annie agrees to put her brand new bike to good use by delivering cakes from her mom's bakery, but can't resist Zach's offer to race, and is angry with him when her bike crashes and the food is ruined. Some other friends try to convince her that responsibility is always handy to keep around, as shown in Icarus and Diatolus, where a boy had too little responsibility to obey his father and paid for it. And 
once again, even though this was supposed to be the 1990s, something from several centuries before was still relevant to their situation. As, as you can tell by the context, instead of just going straight forward with the deliveries, she erased a friend and messed it up. So, anyway, so we can close that one now. And as a little treat for you guys, because I just so happen to have a mythology book on me. Yeah, and this should be notoriously short. We're going to hear about Persephone and how she ended up in a interesting union with her husband. Okay. According to this, Persephone grew up on Olympus and her laughter rang through the brilliant halls. She was the daughter of Demeter, goddess of the hardest fist, and her mother loved her so dearly she could not bear to have her out of her sight. When Demeter sat on her golden throne, her daughter was always on her lap. And when she went down to earth to look after her trees and fields, she took Persephone. Wherever Persephone danced on her light feet, flowers sprang up. She was so lovely and full of grace that even Hades, who saw so little, noticed her and fell in love with her. He wanted her for his queen, but he knew that her mother would never consent to part with her, so he decided to carry her off. Yeah. Doesn't sound very morally correct, but as we all know, the gods ain't always morally correct. Right. One day as Persephone ran about in the meadow gathering flowers, she strayed away from her mother and the attending nymphs. Suddenly, the ground split open and up from the yawning crevice came a dark chariot drawn by black horses. At the reins stood grim Hades. He seized the terrified girl, turned his horses, and plunged back into the ground. A herd of pigs rooting in the meadow tumbled into the cleft, and Persephone's cries for help died out as the ground closed again as suddenly as it opened. Up in the field, a little swineherd stood and wept over the pigs he had lost, while Demeter rushed wildly about in the meadow, looking in vain for her daughter, who had vanished without leaving a trace. Shows the pigs falling in. Yeah. With the frightened girl in his arms, Hades raced his snorting horses down away from the sunlit world. Down and down they sped on the dark path to his dismal underground palace. He led weeping Persephone in, seated her beside him on a throne of black marble and decked her with gold and precious stones. But the jewels brought her no joy. She wanted no cold stones. She longed for warm sunshine and flowers with her golden-tressed mother. Dead souls crowded from out of the cracks and crevices to look at their new queen, while ever more souls came across the sticks and Persephone watched them drink from a spring under dark poplars. It was the spring of leaf, and those who drank from its waters forgot who they were and what they had done on earth. Rhadamanthus, a judge of the dead, dealt out punishment to the souls of great sinners. They were sentenced to suffer forever under the whips of the avenging Arrhenes. Heroes were led to the Elysian fields where they lived happily forever in never failing light. Around the palace of Hades, there was a garden where whispering poplars and weeping willows grew. They had no flowers and bore no fruit and no birds sang in their branches. There was only one tree in the whole realm of Hades that bore fruit. That was a little pomegranate tree. And that's gonna be important. <laughs> The gardener of the underworld offered the tempting pomegranates to the queen, but Persephone refused to touch the food of the dead. Wordlessly, she walked through the garden at silent Hades' side, and slowly, her heart turned to ice. That's yeah. uh, theoretical. It's like means she's starting to become just as nasty as he is. Yeah. Yeah. Above on earth, Demeter ran about searching for her lost daughter, and all nature grieved with her. 
flowers wilted, trees lost their leaves, and the fields grew barren and cold. In vain did the plow cut through the icy ground. Nothing could sprout and nothing could grow while the goddess of the harvest wept. People and animals starved and the gods begged Demeter again to bless the earth, but she refused to let anything grow until she had found her daughter. Yeah, sounds kind of harsh, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Bent with grief, Demeter turned into a gray old woman. She returned to the meadow where Persephone had vanished and asked the sun if he had seen what had happened. But he said no. Dark clouds had hidden his face that day. So even the sun's got a personality here. Yep. Anyways, she wandered around the meadow and after a while she met a youth whose name was Triptolemus. He told her that his brother, a swineherd, had seen his pigs disappear into the ground and had heard the frightened screams of a girl. So she's got a witness. Demeter now understood that Hades had kidnapped her daughter and her grief turned to anger. She called to Zeus and said that she would never again make the earth green if he did not command Hades to return Persephone. Zeus could not let the world perish and he sent Hermes down to Hades bidding him to let Persephone go. So this is one of Zeus's more benign moments, obviously. All right. Even Hades had to obey the order of Zeus, and sadly he said farewell to his queen. Joyfully, Persephone leapt to her feet, but as she was leaving with Hermes, a shooting laugh came from the garden. There stood the gardener of Hades grinning. He pointed to a pomegranate from which a few of the kernels were missing. Persephone, lost in thought, had eaten the seeds, he said. Then dark Hades smiled. He watched Hermes lead Persephone up to the bright world above. He knew that she must return to him, for she had tasted the food of the dead. When Persephone again appeared on earth, Demeter sprang to her feet with a cry of joy and rushed to greet her daughter. No longer was she a sad old woman, but a radiant goddess. Again she blessed her fields, and the flowers bloomed anew, and the grain ripened. Dear child, she said, never again shall we be parted. Together we shall make all nature bloom. But soon, the joy soon was changed to sadness, for Persephone had to admit that she had tasted the food of the dead and must return to Hades. Oh my God. Yep. However, Zeus decided that mother and daughter should not be parted forever. He ruled that Persephone had to return to Hades and spend one month in the underworld for each seed she had eaten. Every year when Persephone left her, Demeter grieved. Nothing grew and there was winter on earth. But as soon as her daughter's light footsteps were heard, the whole earth burst into bloom. Spring had come. As long as mother and daughter were together, the earth was warm and bore fruit. Demeter was a kind goddess. She did not want mankind to starve during the cold months of winter when Persephone was away. She lent her chariot laden with grain to Triptolemus, the youth who had helped her to find her lost daughter. She told him to scatter her golden grain over the world and teach men how to sow it in spring and reap it in fall and store it away for the long months when again the earth was barren and cold. And that's the story of Persephone in a nutshell. Persephone. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.